Hey, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we're going to be shooting some Hornady Outfitters, specifically the 130 grain CX bullet out of the 270 Winchester. And here is a look at the box. Personally, I am sold on the marketing for the Hornady Outfitter line of ammo. I think the box looks really cool. It's got your topo map, but let's flip it around and take a look. So here is your promo info, mostly for the CX bullet. You can stop, pause, and read that if you would like flip it over here here is your velocity information it claims 3,000 feet per second who knows what barrel length that is from we'll see how close we get go ahead and open it up and take a look at the ammo itself so you've got nice nickel plated brass I don't really know that that actually does anything but here is your cartridge it's got that ballistic tip up top solid copper bullet let's see how it does and the test rifle today is going to be my Winchester Model 70 Featherweight, chambered in 270, of course. It's got a 22 inch barrel. Up top, I've got a Swarovski Z3, 3 to 10 by 42. And bringing up the rear, of course, I've got one of my Mason Leather cartridge cuffs. I've got 270 stamped right in. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And I have got to show you, coming around to the other side, I've got my white tail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Hornady Outfitter 130 grain CX bullet from my 270 Winchester. And I did manage to capture three bullets after some hijinks. I'll tell you about that in a second. So we got very, very consistent and deep penetration. It looks like we got, I'm going to call it 31, 31, and 31 just to make it easy. I mean, come on now. They're all right there. There's a bullet down there right there in the case you can't see it. But one, two, three. Let's go on back to the first block. Take a look. So this was part of the hijinks. This particular load in my rifle was wildly inaccurate. I'm talking about group sizes, if you were to group it on paper, of six to eight inches, if not more. So here's one that just tore out the edge of the block. Um, there's a lot of wound cavities in here. It looks like it starts to open up about the one and a half inch mark, comes on back, tapers off about right here at about the 10 inch mark. So real good for you know medium game. The wound cavities aren't particularly wide. They are kind of narrow. That's something that I have noticed with solid copper bullets, actually. But they sure did penetrate deep, that's for sure. And I want to talk about that inaccuracy for just a second. That was just out of my particular rifle. It's a Winchester Model 70 featherweight. For whatever reason, my rifle doesn't like this load at all. I'm talking 6 to 8 inch groups at 100 yards. Kind of crazy. Um, typically that rifle will shoot about one to one and a half inches with federal power shock with federal fusion it likes that stuff pretty good I don't know what it is about this but solid copper bullets are kind of known to be finicky as far as what rifles will shoot them well regardless of bullet weight so in case you don't know a copper bullet a monolithic projectile is going to be much longer than a comparable weight lead and copper projectile because the metal overall is lighter lead is heavier than copper so it makes it finicky on what rifles will shoot it well. If you're thinking about using a solid copper monolithic bullet, make sure and go to the range and make sure your rifle likes it. Of course, not only just to zero your gun with it, but to make sure you can even hit a pie plate with the stuff because sometimes it's not very accurate. Sometimes you'll get rifles that'll just nail them right in there and sub MOA groups with the stuff, but you have to test yours and find out. And let's take a look at the velocities for that Hornady Outfitter 130 grain CX270 load are high was 29.11, our low was 28.55, and our average was 28.91. And here we are looking at those 130 grain CX bullets pulled out of the gel. First we'll talk about weight retention. We saw incredibly consistent and high weight retention, 130, 130, and 129 grains 
for an average, we're going to round up of 130 grains of retained weight. That is 100% weight retention. No surprise with a solid copper bullet. And these things just look incredible. And now on to expansion. We saw 0 0.52, 0 0.53, and 0 0.57 inches for an average of 0.54 inches expanded diameter. Very, very consistent. That works out to 1.9x expansion. And that's about what I've seen with a lot of solid copper bullets. They don't tend to tip over that 2x expansion mark. They tend to be right there close to it, 1.8, 1.9x. I'm really happy with this compared to other solid copper loads I've tested. And here are those 130 grain CX bullets tipped up on their bases. I wanted to show you the mushrooms of these. Very consistent mushrooming. These things just look amazing. And now on to velocity. Our high velocity was 29.11. Our low was 28.55 for an average of 28.91 versus the factory build velocity of 3,000 feet per second. So we did come in a little bit slow, 109 feet per second slow. No surprise, that's sort of par for the course with almost all factory ammo. I wish the factories would start testing their ammo with the length barrels that most hunters use. And now on to penetration. We had incredible penetration with these. 31 inches across the board for all three bullets. So if you're looking for a 270 Winchester load that's going to shoot fast and flat and penetrate deep, these are the ticket. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Hornady Outfitter 130 grain CX load out of the 270 Winchester. The CX is Hornady's solid copper line. I really like the performance we got out of this particular load. 100% weight retention, no surprise there. It's a solid copper bullet. Usually it's going to be 97, 98, 99, 100%. More often than not, 99 or 100. Pretty good expansion for what it is. Solid copper bullets tend not to have that massive expansion that lead and copper bullets do. So to see 1.9x expansion overall, I'm really happy with it. And the expansion was very uniform around the entire circumference of the bullet. So you're getting a pretty good surface area pushing through. And then velocity wise, we are even up there on velocity. Build velocity was 3,000 feet per second. We didn't quite come near that, but our average was 2891. We were only 109 feet per second slow. I say it's pretty good because I've seen a whole lot worse than that. And our high velocity was 2911, so we're in there within 100 feet per second of that build velocity. And regardless, it's still going really, really fast. And then where this load really shines and blows a lot of other things out of the water, Penetration, 31 inches of penetration. That is incredible. A lot of your 30 out 6, 270, you know, your classic hunting caliber bullets, they're right there in that 20 to 26 inch range. It really depends on what load we're talking about. But to get over 30 inches with that expansion is really, really good. And now on to kinetic energy. I'm going to start talking about this in every single video I do going forward. With a 130 grain bullet and an average velocity of 2,891 feet per second, we're looking at 2,413 foot-pounds of kinetic energy at the muzzle. Of course, it's going to be a little bit less at 100 yards and then less the further you get, but we've got kinetic energy to spare. If we're talking about 1,000 foot-pounds for a whitetail, 1,500 for an elk, those are sort of the old standbys that the gun riders used to use, and I see no reason to deviate from that. This is going to have enough kinetic energy to take down whatever you need out to a pretty far distance. So all in all, this load performed extremely well across the board. It's really kind of got it all. It hit all the metrics, and I'm really, really happy with it. If your rifle shoots this stuff well, if you're in a state or locality where you need to use you know, non-toxic solid copper bullets, this is definitely an option. If you're looking for really deep penetration from a 270 Winchester, again, this is a great option. If you have used this stuff, let me and everybody else know down in the comments what your experience was. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, 
at masonleather.com and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.